Yes. Can you right. Say something about that. Um, it's happening. <laughs> People are divesting from fossil fuels. Um, um, in fact, uh, Wolverton. Stephen Whip. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how I found it. Yeah, let me just see. Uh, I've got the quote here actually. We expect to launch our first in house managed portfolio by the end of the year. This will provide clients with a fully screened and discretionarily managed investment vehicle that is completely fossil fuel free. They're really hard to find. Yes. Really hard to find. Um, not only will it be divested of support for old fossil fuel based economy, it would also be invested in the new economy the company's products and services that are going to help us get out of this mess. The ones that are where the puck is going, not where it is right now. You know, anybody know Wayne Gretzky? That was his expertise. He, he knew where the puck was going to end up, so he didn't chase it around. He did rather well in hockey. Oh, he did. Right. Yes. And there, there, there are lots of those sort of things emerging in, in education, I, and you know, one of my daughter's teachers took a course on indigenizing the classroom. Mm -hmm. and, and so her English class is quite different from others that, that you might imagine. They choose their own grade and at the beginning of the, the term, and, and then the teacher helps them achieve it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way they approach it. You still need grades, it's, you know, mm -hmm. still have the system. But if you're looking at education, for example, we've got an enormous educational infrastructure. Yeah. Buildings underutilized. I mean, um, I mean, just that's an example. Education isn't just education; it's a community center. Yes. Right? yes why absolutely. Is not, well, why can't we bring other educators into that system? And yeah. They have to be with it. You know. It's, yeah. It's I, just, I know. Yeah. I know. That's why I want to do an event mm -hmm. actually on, on education and the new economy. Yeah. It's a big topic. Anything else? Well, I agree with your comments there because I work in economic development as well with communities, and inevitably they start with that list. Including, they should they would add to that mining, forestry, right. oil and gas. Yeah. And they, it just blocks right. your thinking because mm -hmm. you're not getting into other ways mm -hmm. of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Um, One of the things I meant to say about crowdfunding, it occurred to me that uh, when Jordan was talking that taxes were like the original crowdfunding. Yes. Or one, you know, it's one way of looking at taxes. Mm -hmm. is it's our mutual agreement mm -hmm. to uh, maintain our infrastructure mm -hmm. in, our, in our cities. Anything else? People don't willingly pay taxes. No. <laughs> But yes. if, if, I wonder if, if the municipalities or whatever, if they said, you know, we're crowdfunding to maintain your street. Yeah. I wonder, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just think that's interesting. Yeah. Right. 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 that idea of people thinking yeah. of how their taxes are spent, too. Right? Yes. Like if we're just kind of giving to this huge pool and we don't know, we would like to know what's happening with yeah. our money. And so there's yeah. something in there of yeah. allowing people to direct. And they see the result of their roads breaking down. They choose not to yeah. direct their taxes to that. The city of Victoria just directed seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars of their um, the tax money they get from um, oil and gas mm -hmm. to uh, uh, an active transportation infrastructure to improve it for all levels of abilities of people, whether they're eight or eighty, and. Um, so biking and walking and all those kinds of things. So, for example, um, um, when Mark Lakeman started the placemaking initiatives in, in Portland, they decided they wanted to build a Cobb uh, message board to put on the corner in their neighborhood. And it took months to get this approved so they could build this structure. And they just kept working with the city and. And the city, you know, they'd say, well, we really want to do this thing. And they're like, yeah, I don't know. You just, who, nobody's ever built a cop message board before. And, they said, what? and then, so they would write back and say, well, yeah, we understand that. But, you know, if we do this, it, it, it actually addresses the this, 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 and this, and this, and the city's priorities of what it wants to accomplish. And 
they send that off and they say, well, yes, but, you know, and back and forth in a very graceful, gracious way they, they did this. And eventually where they've ended up is if you want to build a Cobb message board in your community, you call up the city and they email you the plans. The end. <laughs> <laughs> and you just do it. So it, it took a while to get to that point, but those are, so the, so the wait time and the frustration and the sort of anti-community kind of um, conversation. And so one of the things they were saying is, so, so you've never been on our street and you've never been in our neighborhood and you get to decide how we use these common areas between us, the streets and the boulevards. And <laughs> this is, you know, how, we'd like to decide, you know, can you allow us to do that? And if, so they've come a long way there and that's starting to leak out into other communities. Move on. We should move on. We didn't. Did we take a break? We did take a break. Okay. Uh, hand up, Jordan. Yes. Um, and next slide too. Sorry. Sure. I can do hand up. Oh, thank you. So this, the eight forms of capital, are in this book. Um, this is a graphic that. This is a linear list, but this is a graphic that kind of shows. Um, how these um, capitals work with each other. And we're just going to touch very, very um, high level um, briefly. There's a, there's, there's a lot of depth you can go with this. Uh, we're going to start with just a personal inventory just to give you an idea of the, the power of this and understanding um, a different way that we can see the resources we have in our own lives. You can do this with ecologies of businesses. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, you thanks, thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, but, but right now we're going to start, um, start with ourselves. So I'll just go through them. Because this is one way to start expanding on that both and frame that we were exploring in the first part. Because it shifts how we perceive our current and potential resources, both financial and then, 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 down here. Um, so if we start with an inventory, we start to see where, where we have holes, where we have strengths, where we have weaknesses, and and then we can start to fill those either um, ourselves or with things um, from others, other people or whatever. So social. That we, you mentioned social capital earlier. So social capital is our connections, our relationships, uh, the kind of influence we have, our networks. Um, those are the things that we consider social capital. So um, in doing the Living in the New Economy events, for example, I gained a lot of social capital. I, I got introduced to a whole swath of extraordinary human beings, Jordan Bob being one of them. Um, that are working on, in this context of, of the new economy. And so my social capital there went up. Um, cultural, shared internal, external experiences. Um, so story, myth, song, art, um, little less tangible, not something we generally do by ourselves sometimes, but it's, it's usually done with in groups. Um, a gift circle could be a type of cultural capital. Somebody who hosts gift circles, um, for example, and many other things. Can you think of any other examples there, Gordon, or Jordan? Um, even like placemaking, like you were talking about, right. I think that's yeah, yeah, yeah. creating cultural capital as yeah. well as social capital. And, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of connection between them. They're, they're differentiated, but like I showed you in that graphic, they, they, they interweave. So spiritual capital, so whatever it is within our own uh, worlds that we believe, karma, faith, presence, awareness of connection to some sort of greater whole, um, um, that's, that's the sort of thing that, that we're referring to. Um, living capital, and that is, some people call this natural capital, but stuff that's alive, soil, Water, animals, plants, our health comes under this, food, ecosystems, 
And, and generally, how, it, how it's been working is that we, we, we spend the core of this to gain this and this, financial and material capital. And so it's out of balance. And trying to point to using this and this to build more of this so that we can regenerate it to a point where it's sustainable. Intellectual capital, very highly valued in our culture right now. Ideas, concept, knowledge, truth. Um, you know, our, our education system, especially like universities and colleges and stuff, is an exchange of financial capital for intellectual capital. That's basically what's what's going on so far. Um, not entirely, obviously, but um, that's the basic transaction that happens there. Experiential capital, so actual embodied know-how built from your own personal experience. So you guys gained a little bit of experiential capital today when we did that sort of head, heart, gut integrated thing. So you you had some physical embodied experience that has increased your know-how in that realm. Um, financial capital, pretty easy to understand since it's, a, it's the focus right now. Money, currency, securities, and other instruments. I added open money or community currencies to that list. Um, they didn't have it on there. Um, material capital, um, so it's our stuff non-living materials, building materials, art supplies, fossil fuels, things we have in our house, our house, um, cars, you know, those kinds of things. Any questions there? Yes? I used to teach financial planning and I, well, vastly oversimplified things, but I said in a certain way, people, our careers consist of converting our intellectual, our human capital, which includes a lot of these things, mm -hmm. into financial capital. So by the time we retire, we're a burned out wreck of a person. Mm -hmm. At least we have a pile of yeah. financial capital to maintain ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I borrow one of these? Oh. Yeah. I forgot to keep one for myself. Um, yeah. It's not sustainable. And it, it is not a whole system. This represents a whole way of looking at how we resource ourselves, both as individuals or families or communities or neighborhoods or cities or collections of social regenerative enterprises. Um, there are a number of uh, contexts you can use this in, um, but they talk about local living economies. It's another economy. Um, so we'll substitute new economy for the purposes of this and say the new economy movement is about maximizing relationships not maximizing profits. Broad-based ownership and democracy, not concentrated wealth and power. Sharing, not hoarding. Life-serving, not self-serving. Partnership, not domination. Cooperation-based, not competition-based. Win-win exchange, not win-lose exploitation. Creativity, not conformity. A living return, not the highest return. A living wage, not the minimum wage. A fair price, not the lowest price. Being more, not having more. Interconnectedness, not separation. Inclusion, not exclusiveness. Community and collective joy, not isolation and unhappiness. Cultural diversity, not monoculture. Biodiversity, not monocrops. Family farms, not factory farms. Slow food, not fast food. Our bucks, not Starbucks. Our ma mart, not Walmart. A love of life, not a love of money. I thought that captured the essence of what we've been talking about today in a really beautiful way. And the next slide is kind of another way of looking at it. Oh, one back, there we go. This is a photo somebody took of uh, a page in um, Charles Eisenstein's book, The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible. They added their own comment. <laughs> the more beautiful world my heart knows is possible is a world with a lot more pleasure, a lot more touch, a lot more lovemaking, a lot more hugging, a lot more gazing into each other's eyes, a lot more fresh ground tortillas and just harvested tomatoes still warm from the sun, a lot more singing, a lot more dancing, a lot more timelessness, a lot more beauty in the built environment, a lot more pristine views, 
a lot more fresh water from the spring. Our wealth, so-called, is a veil for our poverty, a substitute for what is missing. And uh, with that, I will sign off, unless there are any final questions. Yes? Just a comment. I, I think yep. the big thing here is some of these are growing, but how do you scale it up um, faster um, before some of the climatic you know, dangers hit us even worse than they are? So I think it's a question of scaling. Yeah. And I don't know, there's lots of conversation going on about how to do that. I mean, I think it's one place where the old economy plays a role. It's like there's a lot of money in the old economy, and if that money, that financial capital that was down here is used to fuel living capital and cultural capital and spiritual capital, those things that we can't live without, that's, that's one way those transitions can happen faster. And I don't know in the new economy if the scaling up is going to happen in the same way the scaling up has happened in the old economy. I know um, I'm telling this story third hand, so I'll just say that up front, that there's a, there's a thing called Social Venture Institute, um, and this was up at Hollyhock, and a bunch of social entrepreneurs and other kinds of business people gather and talk about social ventures. And, um, and there was one fellow there who apparently is a buyer for um, some fast food chains. That was his job. And he's listening to these stories and is just feeling really heartbroken about you know, people struggling so much to get these really um, needed enterprises off the ground. And so he puts up his hand and he says, you know, I have this capacity to buy like six million pounds of blueberries overnight if I have to. You know? mm. So I, I can do that. How can I help you guys? And the answer that came back to him was talk to those organizations that you're buying for ask them to get smaller and more community oriented so that those businesses can buy locally. That was the answer to it. So the scaling up doesn't necessarily mean doing more of one thing. It, it means diversifying more quickly or, or you know, becoming a village in some way, shape or form, having more villages. Yeah, it's like Correct. scaling across. Yeah, that, yeah, thank you, Jordan. Yeah, so scaling across. Yeah. And I, I have to say that just in, in the last few years, I, I've seen a tremendous increase in, you know, everything that we're talking about here. Yeah. And just awareness of it. And, you know, even Stephen Whip, uh, in that quote there, he was talking about how in just a, a couple of years' Two time, years. There was a two-thirds increase in the number of uh, responsibly invested assets, and you know, so I think it might be going just about as fast as a human system can go uh, safely and sustainably. Um, especially because there are all these failures along the way that need to happen and and need to be learned from and integrated and then move forward. I, I don't know if it's possible to go faster. I I, I think you you're right, Jordan, and. and so one of the things that I didn't go on about here, but I do go on about, is, is sometimes the faster way to get something done is to slow down. And to, really, and to sit really deeply with something for a while and not take action right away. <clears throat> Tune into what's going on around you, talk to people, sit with yourself, sit with other people, and then step. And I think that's a capacity that we could be learning. And I think when we do that, we take better steps and we don't have as many failures and so that we do end up in the long term moving forward more quickly. Actually, I have, I have a really good example of that. Um, a few years ago, uh, or a couple of years ago, I helped to start a community garden in uh, Vancouver. And basically there was about a year and a half of process, kind of going through the park board approval process and, and all of these things before we could actually start building the garden. And you know, we were kind of frustrated by the fact that it would take so long. But uh, after the fact, um, several of us acknowledged that, you know what, that was probably the best thing that could have happened to us. Because in, in that year and a half, we developed a community around the garden, we built trust amongst each other, we got to know each other, 
we became aware of resources that we could use for free to build the garden. And, and as a result, the, the garden that we built wasn't just a garden where there were a bunch of plots and people didn't know each other. It's a total community center and it's been working really, really well. And a lot of other people that have been in other community gardens even remark on how it's just a different feeling. And I think we wouldn't have had that had we just, you know, gone from concept to construction in a few months. Yeah. Thanks, Jordan. Brilliant. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> you want to go to the next slide? Um, my partner in the most recent Living the New Economy in Victoria, Jason Keel, developed this he says, like, how can, when, we, when, when there are people in the room and they, you know, because you go to an event, you get excited, and then, and then, you know, by Tuesday, you're back into your life, right? Um, but if we can capture some of the energy in an event, um, in the moment, um, we can, you know, start to get people connected in the moment for future endeavors. And so we d he developed this thing he calls five in five. So five things you could do in five minutes just on your phone if you want to. Um, and so I came up with my own five and five for, for this um, that you can do if you want to take some of these things forward. You can bookmark the livingtheneweconomy.com and read so that you can read a blog post there at some point. I encourage you to find one resource, contact, or connection in the new economy that you think could make a difference and make a commitment to bring them into the, into the party, meaning the Green Party. I mean, maybe you have another party. The new economy <laughs> party. Yeah, party. Um, put a note in your calendar um, to invite three new economy friends to the next three Green Party events. Follow the Indigenomics hashtag. Um, very interesting work going on there. Um, put out one tweet or post highlighting somebody you know in the new economy and use the hashtag new economy. And I also invite you not to take my word for anything I have said today, um, but to keep digging deeper yourself and um, looking at these perspectives and just see what happens for you in, in, your, own, in your own world. Um, too bad we can't have two slides up at once because um, the next one is, is some resources that uh, um, are around. These, these two can take you deeper into the eight forms of capital right here. Um, Ethan Rowland and Greg Zangwa who, who wrote this book. Um, and Javin Bernakovich who um, is a traveling fool. I never know where he's living in any given moment, but you can get a hold of him. Um, through uh, permaculturebc.com. He's got this whole systems management decision-making framework that uses the eight forms of capital. It's, it's a really powerful tool. Um, Juliet Shore has written a book called Plenitude um, that's part of this realm. I didn't bring that book, so I thought I'd put it up here. Um, Katie Teague has a, has a movie called Money and Life that you can get to be screened. Um, we did a, the first uh, Living the Economy event in Vancouver. It was great. Um, and then dig into Charles Eisenstein's work a little deep, more deeply, sign on to his uh, newsletters. He's an extraordinary writer. And this is his book, too, if you want to take a look. And come up and take a look at, at any of these. Um, and I've got the five and five here, if you want to look. And that's if you want to get a hold of me, I'm down there. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Nicole.